Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So hi, everyone. Welcome to our brown bag session today on security. And my name is Lisa Carnes. I'm one of our CSMs here at Sumo Logic, and I'm going to get things kicked off here for us. If you haven't been to one of our brown bag sessions before, we launched the series earlier this year, and we have them on the second, the third, and the fourth Tuesday of every month. And they're designed to provide opportunities for our customers to spend some time with us in a more intimate setting to learn about key technical topics. And so today we're going to have our session being led by one of our professional services consultants, Lucas, and he's going to cover a security topic, specifically CSE tuning. And so if you guys have any questions, I'll enable the chat function for us all and or you can use the Q&A and feel free to ask your questions and then we'll also have some time at the end for Q&A as well. So I'll go ahead and kick it off to Lucas. Hello, hey, I'm Lucas Laskowski. I'm with the professional services team. Been with Sumo for a uh, year and a half and this is my first brown back session so I'm looking forward to going over some uh, CSC tuning options uh, that I find common across uh, the customer base. So hopefully this is uh, helpful for everybody. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, just uh, you can go ahead and stop me or put your questions in the chat. However, we'll just make it free flowing. So with that, I'll, I'm going to kick it off. So first, uh, this is in line with our Sumo Logic values. We're in it with our customers and bringing light to dark. And today we're gonna cover rule tuning in CloudSim. So first, a uh, quick refresher, uh, customer data sources of really how the data gets processed and flows through, through the various components. So we have our collection at, at the Sumo core or SIP. Uh, we ingest, parse, uh, we do map, mapping, enrichments. This allows us to create records within CSC. Those records then get passed through our rule set to generate signals. And once signals, uh, enough signals are generated for an entity, uh, we create insights and hopefully these insights are actionable security investigations. So this is the goal of tuning, obviously, to reduce the noise and have actionable insights in place. Another view of the signal generation flow. So when records are created, they get uh, passed through our, our rules and rules or signals generate entities which are IPs, host names, MAC address, uh, user names. And those entities then get scored on the activity uh, through signals. So how are rules evaluated? Another <clears throat> refresher. So uh, rules are compared against incoming fields and records to determine if there is a match in the rule expression. And match will create a signal connected to a specific entity and criticality score will be added. So if a signal is severity two, um, username fails to log in, that severity two gets score gets added to that, that user ID. When any one entity receives a combined score of over 12 during 14 days, which is a default setting, an insight will be created. The insight uh, will contain signals that contributed to insights, records for each signal, and any enrichments, for example, uh, server inventory source. And then the uh, kind of main focus of the SIM, which are entities, and those are central to CSE, uh, used to correlate signals and create insights. So entity is an actor, for example, a host name, username, IP, or MAC address, or any custom entity types. An entity is created when signals generated. So 
if a signal has multiple entities defined uh, within a rule, it will create multiple signals for, for one record, for one activity. And then we'll uh, go over in a little bit more detail about entity groups a little later. But besides grouping of entities, uh, entity group can automate the process of setting entity attributes. So CSC tuning, um, several options here. We can modify rules without rewriting from scratch. So our out of a box rules can be modified uh, in line. So the syntax of the rule can be changed. So that's when tuning expressions come in where you can add on to include or exclude specific uh, match items. We can apply multiple tuning expressions to multiple rules and we can keep the benefits of CAC automatic security updates. So um, when we create a uh, tuning expression that preserves the original rule. So if there are any updates to the rule, um, that it, it will get applied without uh, having to, to redo the rule from scratch. So this is uh, a slide that kind of summarizes what I'm gonna go over today, which are different tuning options. So we have our standard match list. We have tagging which is a newer method. It's similar to match list, uh, but it, we create a custom tag and we can assign tags automatically via naming convention or an inventory source, or we can assign manually via an entity manual. We also have custom match lists. So uh, we can create custom columns and custom match lists that match our use case. Uh, Suppress lists are used for global suppression of all signals that uh, contain the specific entity uh, in a record. Then we'll go over some rule tuning expressions and examples. So it's same syntax as rules applied to specific rule or to all rules. Then we have network blocks. Um, that's how you can enumerate your network, uh, specifically you can mark certain uh, network ranges internal, which uh, many of our rules have built in uh, flag to exclude internal uh, alerts, for example. Then we can duplicate or modify out of a box rule. So again, uh, since the query can be modified, we can make a copy of that rule and modify it in line if we don't want to apply too many tuning expression to the rule. Uh, another way is to change a signal severity. For example, you can change severity to zero to maintain all the statistics, the auto suppression of signals and inclusion into insights. But once the rule is turned into zero, it actually won't trigger an insight but it will be part of the context information within an insight. We can also mark it as prototype. So also rule won't generate um, an insight uh, and also the suppression and all of the statistics uh, won't work the same as with changing it to zero. So usually prototyping would be just in the very beginning of a potentially noisy rule um it's 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 a good way to to implement uh, a custom rule and then if all else, else fails or if the specific rule doesn't meet the use case uh for our environment we can just disable the rule so tuning via match lists uh, match lists are typically typically used in a, as an exclusion list for indicators that should be exempt from the rules so we have 40 plus standard match lists uh, predefined by Sumo Logic. And what I mean predefined, uh, you will see within your uh, rule set, the out of a box rules all uh, often have a, a clause to array matches, uh, specific match for a specific match list. Sometimes in your environment, you won't see all of those lists, but uh, the documentation, uh, describes all the standard 
match list that should be added and populated. This is probably the best, quickest, uh, most efficient way to begin tuning uh, large amounts of noise. So here, uh, I'm gonna look at a walkthrough on creating and updating a match list. We're gonna quickly walk through on how to create a match list. Under content, match list, you can see all of the match lists in your environment that are available to be updated. If you don't see a match list uh, that's quoted in within the out of the box rules, uh, you can go ahead and create it as long as you follow the same name as you see in the rule. So in our case, uh, we need to update match list call or create matches called domain controllers. Leaving the time to live blank because those records don't expire in our case. And the target column, which is a key identifier here, is going to be host name. So now that we have our domain controllers match list, we can be, begin utilizing it. So first, we want to populate it with known domain controllers. In my, my case, I have uh, created a lab host, which I'm going to add to that list to then start taking advantage of built-in detections. A couple ways of uh, adding an item to a match list. Uh, here I'm going to show how you can add it directly from the record. So you can just hover over the device host name in the record, and you can select add to match list. This will open a new dialog. Here you're gonna select match list you wanna add, add to. Here we're adding it domain controllers, verify our value. No expiration. And go ahead and hit refresh. And we can now see the device on our list. Next step would be to see this in action. So we can then go and look at our records. And you can see our original records do not mention any matches to any of the match lists. So we can go ahead and refresh and then search for the specific host name. My host name is. We can see our latest records. And under details, you can see list matches domain controllers with target column host name. So first, uh, are there any any questions or clarification? I see there's uh, some activity in the chat. Just don't. Oh, that, that was me, Lucas. I was just putting the links in from your deck. Okay. Yep. So uh, just on, on the match list, this was an example of uh, creating a, a match list to and updating to actually take advantage of, of the match list being used in a rule. So <clears throat> in this case, it's almost like an inclusion match list. Um, oftentimes, matches can also be used to exclude records, so uh, they can also be used in a tuning expression. So for a good example will be a vulnerability scanners. If, if you mark uh, a host name as a vulnerability scanner, it will be excluded from many out-of-the-box rules. 
versus in here we're actually doing is to include uh, that domain controller for uh, domain controller specific rules. So just want to clarify that. So um, next concept is cloud sim entity groups and entity groups assign attributes based on values on or inventory data. So you can assign specific tags, criticality, or suppress specific group of entities. Uh, why do we use them? So it automates the assignment of the attributes. So instead of managing a match list, you can create an entity group based on uh, naming convention on or, or an inventory. So any new item that matches that naming convention or is in an inventory can automatically be applied uh, with, with the specific tags. So um, tags are applied not only to an entity, but also on the record itself. So as soon as a record comes in and it matches the, the entity group, it, it's gonna apply there without having to fire a signal. That's what that means. Um, tags can be used in rule expressions, which I'll show example of that later. And we can assign entity criticality to increase or decrease signal severity, as well as we can su suppress signals. So now uh, we're gonna uh, do a walkthrough of tag schemas and entity group creation. First, we're going to create a custom tag schema. This can be done under settings, workflow, and tag schemas. Here you can see built-in tag schemas, such as device type or device group. You can recognize them because they have the underscore before the name. <clears throat> custom ones are often useful where so the default tag schemas don't match your use case. So in this case, we want to divide up certain users based on the naming convention to different user groups or user types. So first, I'm going to create user type, tag, tag schema key. Uh, we're going to apply the content just to entity. We're going to select allow custom values. And then here we're going to select our value options. So first we can do administrators. Contractors. Uh, we could do testers. We can do disabled. And then a watch list for any users that we want to monitor additionally. Over here, everything looks good. Hit submit. Next step is going to use our tech schemas to create an entity group. So in here, we'll go to settings, entities, and groups. You can already see that I've created an administrators and contractor group earlier. Here, I'm going to show creation of a new group called testers. And we're going to match this on based on values. And any type is going to be a username, match condition on prefix, and environment my environment TST dash is the prefix for any test user. So here we should now see available schema keys in our dropdown, including the ones we just created, which is user type. And in here, 
we'll select testers. And we're not going to suppress the signals from, from those users. So next step is um, we're going to look at examples of how this is all brought together. Uh, so how the match list, uh, original match list creation uh, generated some signals. And then how, how do we use entity grouping to exclude some of the signals from specific rules? Any questions so far? Not I'll I'll just move on. Now that we have identified a domain controller in our environment, we can see this applied to our out of box rules. So we can take a look at the signals here and try to find opportunities to tune them. So here we can see. Suspicious DC log on as well as interactive log on to a domain controller. And if you look closely on the signal, you can see the field tag was applied for the TST user based on their prefix, as well as the list match was applied for domain controllers again. And hence, this is why this uh, rule fired because of that match list. So now we want to eliminate test users from generating events on our domain controllers. So since this is expected activity, we can go ahead and try to tune us. And we've created a entity group for testers. So we can use that group in order to tune the, this activity out. So here we can go to the actual rule that generated this. We can add a tuning expression, create a new tuning expression. We're going to name this exclusion of testers from DC rules, for example. So in here, we're going to select um, suspicious DC logon. We can look for domain brute force attempt, for example. We're going to Go ahead and exclude records that match the expression. So here, with this is where the expression syntax comes in, and this this is identical to a syntax written in in the actual rule. So in our case, we're trying to get rid of uh, testers. So in here, what we have to do is. Create a match. And in this case, it's going to contain field tags to look for um, the schema tags. User username is our entity. And then our actual uh, entity group is user type testers. Going to look over the signals again to look at the different rules that were part of this host in these DC login events. So I also see interactive log on the domain controller. I'm going to add that.
to just validate my syntax. Uh, oftentimes when you paste this from like a notepad, um, you have to fix the quotes to make sure this edit's complete and accepted. So I click submit and our tuning expression is in place. So now that we've created our tuning expression, it's time to test it. So normally what I do is <clears throat> I would go back to signals, look for the noisy rule that I was previously targeting for tuning. So in this case, we can do a suspicious DC logon. This shows the actual record and signal generated. Um, and here by clicking on the actual rule, I can see now that the tuning expression has been applied. So I'm gonna go ahead and test the rule expression. I'm gonna expand my search time to last three hours. Normally I wouldn't expect any events to be here. But as you can see, I did get a hit on one event, user username, TST, um, and field tags are testers. So I was actually expecting this to be excluded. So now I wanna make sure that my tuning expression works correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this tuning expression. <clears throat> and I can see, already see my mistake I made. I selected include instead of exclude. So this is a easy mistake that could definitely result in um, unexpected signals being suppressed or generation of too many signals. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit this again. I'm gonna go back to the suspicious DC logon, test this again. And now you can see for the last three hours, we have no records that match our expression. It means our tuning was applied correctly. So next, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna cover suppression lists. So suppression lists uh, are similar to match lists. However, um, they apply globally. So uh, you have to be very careful when using those because adding an entity to a suppress list will essentially silence any signals uh, whose records include that entity anywhere. So match lists are a little bit more surgical because you can do directional uh, matching. For example, you can match only on source host name versus host name. Uh, when you add this this list to a uh, or this hosting to a suppression list it just it doesn't look at the details of uh, directional and specific fields it just suppresses it as long as it's present in the record so again it enables you to suppress signals that contain a particular indicator value in any of the signals records another way to um, tune is to duplicate the out-of-a-box rule. So this is often useful because some out-of-a-box rules uh, can be modified. So uh, specific syntax you'd like to add to the rule uh, or reduce the, uh, the number of entities that are included in the rule. So for certain legacy rules, for example, you might have a single rule that is firing on an IP, host name, uh, username. So each record that, that contains those fields, it's gonna essentially generate three signals. So for some, uh, for some analysts, this is a little too noisy. The example will be like a brute force attempt where 
you uh, you might want to focus just on the username, not necessarily on source, destination IP, and host names, uh, especially when it comes to like authentication servers where uh, it might trigger a signal each time somebody fails uh, fails to log in, uh, passing through authentication server. So this is where you would separate that rule, uh, essentially make a copy and modify the entities present in the rule. So <clears throat> this is good to target specific uh, list of users, computers, or environments, and enables inline editing of the rule syntax instead of a tuning expression. Additional tuning options that I want to briefly cover would be change signal severity. So uh, I encourage you to download the latest CSC uh, application. Uh, within there, there's a new Insight Trainer. This, this feature is uh, very useful in some uh, tuning suggestions and seeing how changing a signal severity would impact uh, generation of insights. Um, I touched on this uh, briefly earlier, change uh, severity to zero. This will enable you to preserve visibility. You'll still have those signals uh, under the, the entity activity score as well as under the insights. Then we can use entity criticality within entity groups to increase or uh, reduce sensitivity. Mark rules as prototype, so no signals will be generated and signals won't be listed under the insights related to the entity. Disable rule, if the rule doesn't produce an actionable insight and no tuning can fix it, get rid of it. And the network blocks. So uh, this is very useful if, if you want to set, for example, uh, your internal networks by setting uh, that flag, you will eliminate uh, generation of, of certain uh, detections that ignore internal networks. And here's just an example of the syntax. So um, I'll show this later on screen of, of what that looks like in, in, in the record. So here um, I'll move to our Q&A, but before I do that, I just want to show example of um, example of how a network block is applied. So we can go under our content network blocks. And I've added this slash 32 address and created a label called lab not suppressing signals from it. So once this network block is, is created, we can look in our signals. Or actually I can search search for it in the records. So what I'm trying to do is see if if the network block that I applied, is is actually is actually working
So here's an example where the source device IP matched my network block and the location is listed as lab. So in order to, for example, create a tuning expression, what I usually do is I'll go in here and do copy expression. And then show you the other way of creating a tuning expression. You go here and create, and you can exclude source device IP location lab. So if, if I was trying to ignore any signals for a specific rule that uh, originate from my lab IP, this is how I would do it. Uh, one other thing on entity groups and criticality that, that I wanted to go over. So first, we have our criticality menu here and we can create uh, a test criticality, for example. And this is as simple as, let's say we wanna reduce the signal generation for specific users, for, for testers. So in here, I'm gonna do severity divided by four. Create this. I'm gonna go back to my entity groups that I created earlier. Let's say we we want contractors. And here again, we're applying tags based on the prefix, but we can also set global criticality to test. So anybody that's part of this, this group of contractors or testers or administrators, um, we can set this criticality to be uh, divided by four. This way it won't generate as many signals and in insights. So I'm gonna stop here. Um, See if there are any questions. Any clarification? You are all welcome to come off of mute if you'd like as well, if you'd like to ask your question. I guess no questions. Okay. Great. Well, thank you, Lucas. This was awesome. Uh, we will be getting the recording out as well to everyone. And we usually post it on our YouTube channel for you guys to reference to. Well, okay. yeah, thanks for your time today. Yeah, thanks everyone as well. I hope everyone has a good rest of their days. See you.